Well, I decided to speak on this matter because I have the moral obligation to do so as a devotee who served under the prophet till his last moment and privileged to be made a trustee of the Skwan Ministries and also being the face behind Emmanuel TV commentaries since its inception. I would have loved to tow the path of my mentor who in his characteristic manner never used to respond to critics and blasphemers because of their ignorance and arrogance. You know, it is pretty hard to convince a mind that is already warped or biased. Remember when Jesus stood trial before Pontius Pilate, he remained silent when he realized that the truth had been ignored. However, I am doing this to strengthen the faith of the millions of people who have been followers of the TB Joshua's ministries and have been greatly inspired by his teachings, impacted by his miracles, and benefited from his generosity through various works of charity. To them, I say, cheer up. Prophet T.B. Joshua is just being ushered into his posthumous hall of fame with these new waves of free adverts. As someone who served in the Squire Ministries for 27 years of my life, all those so-called disciples met me in the ministry except Bisola. I knew how most of them came and why they left. But I didn't think it was necessary refuting any of those fabricated allegations, fabricated confessions coming from the lips of disgruntled persons who could not endure the discipline of discipleship and as a result dropped out with malicious discontent. And now it's time to make a career from tarnishing the reputation of the same man you once called Daddy Daddy and enjoyed his fatherly love and care for so many years. What a shame. I'm not here to attack anyone, but I will only touch on a few issues that bother on those things some people so much believe as convincing pieces of evidences. Those materials you see must have taken some serious time and effort to carefully craft them together. For instance, the prophet never stopped disciples from getting married. He only taught us that it is better for one to secure his or her future first before going into marriage. He said since marriage is both a commitment and responsibility, if you are still in the pursuit of your career and at the same time thinking about marriage, it becomes an unnecessary liability. That is it. As he said, how can I be backing you and you are backing someone else? And for goodness sake, how do you think a leader who is married and have children will stop his followers from doing the same? So firstly, the Lady Angelique had left the ministry way back to her country because she wanted to get married to a fellow disciple, but the prophet advised her based on what I have just said. But she disagreed and left. After a long while, she suddenly reappeared in front of the church gate with a hidden camera and started screaming, causing scene. He had sex with me, he made love with me. Why didn't she do that when she was living? Come on, you call that evidence? No, it is acting. And please take this for records. I joke was never a biological daughter of Prophet T.B. Joshua. 
the prophet has only three biological daughters and the whole world know them. Ajoke was a few days old baby abandoned under a truck around the church premises by her callous mother. The prophet picked her up and reported the case to the police and rather than sending her to the orphanage home, he chose to father her. Despite adopting her as his own daughter and giving her all the fatherly love and care. And this little girl was growing up to the admiration of everyone and suddenly became utterly rebellious to the point that everyone became fed up of her and one day she left. All her records are in the Scorn archives. Why did Agamor Paul leave the Scorn? He was sent as an evangelist to the Scorn branch in Ghana and there he fell in love with the daughter of a regional minister. The prophet, being a man of vision, called him and said, I am not saying you shouldn't get married. You are of age, of course. But I don't see any future in your relationship with this lady. But Agomo was hell-bent on marrying this lady. And sadly, after the prophet told him this, few months later, the lady in question died. And Agomo became disoriented and began rebelling even worse in the discipleship quarters. So the prophet called him one day and said, Agomo, I can see that your mind is no longer here. And rather than offending the Holy Spirit, let me bless you so that you may go. So the prophet blessed him and he left. Rachel had the spirit of woman, as we call it in the scorn, and as she rightly confessed, the prophet sent her back home to her country, UK, several times, and still, years after, she refused to be delivered. So, she left. Bisola was continuously rebellious, and the prophet sent her home one day to call her mother. When the mother came, she thanked the prophet so much for being able to harbor her daughter all these years despite her unbearable character. Then she told the prophet in the presence of Bissola, Man of God, I know you are a true prophet of God, but Bissola is my daughter and I know her very well. I don't think you are able to tame her. The rest stories about Bissola how she came to the squan and what problem brought her are all packaged in the video posted by the church when she and Agamor Paul first embarked on their campaign of calumny against T.B. Joshua tagged deception of the age. I know you are hearing most of these things for the first time and I can go on and on but let me stop here. Remember, the Bible says, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. If the prophet did any wrong whilst alive, leave judgment for God. After all, everyone, whether lying or truthful, will one day stand to face God's righteous judgment on the last day. But all I can say here is this. Most of these people were just passers by. It doesn't matter how long you stay in a place or with a person, if you were never impacted or influenced by the culture and discipline of that place, you were just a passerby.